G'day, welcome. Today it's pretty exciting. We're on location at Curtis Falls, which is on Tambourine Mountain where I live. I live just up around the corner from here. So we're just gonna have a little a little play with some acrylics again. I've already got the paints out, I'll run you through them. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna enjoy, relax, and get a bit of paint on the canvas. So I painted this red already, just uh, I don't like the white canvas. White canvas is a bit scary sometimes. So we'll start off with a red background. It doesn't really matter. Some of it might show through a bit later, um, but that's a good thing. So I'm going to get a little bit of phthalo blue. So I've got basically, you know, red, yellow, blue, um, white, a bit of black. So. We'll get started and just map this, map this in. So I'll start with the water. Where am I going? Uh, that'll be our water line with a whole bunch of rocks. Such a beautiful spot, that's a lovely waterfall coming down. It's a bit noisy, sorry about the audio, if it's a bit, a bit of racket going on, but um, it's just such a beautiful location. So I spent a lot of time down here, just walking and checking it out. Beautiful spot. Okay. So once again, like most of my stuff, I'm not worrying about getting everything photographically perfect. I just want to get basically what's there in front of us. That big shelf across there, big rock shelf. Get that in. And a lot of these big columns of rock here are it's all volcanic, it's uh, basalt. Overflow from, um, from the volcano that went off many years ago. So that's where the waterfall will go, I guess, in there somewhere. Okay. All right, so basically you know where I'm going. I think, you know, you just map it all in. Get a bit of shade and darks happening. And once again, the beauty of using acrylic, it dries so quick, so you can really play with it. We'll come back a few seconds later, it's dry. You just keep building it up slowly. So just our lights and darks and shadows. Okie dokie. Oh. I've gone out on a bit of a limb here for you guys today. Sitting on a log, if I drop anything or fall, I'm in the drink. That's all part of the fun.
So it's always pretty daunting if you've got a white canvas and you're on site, plain air painting. Where do I start? What do I do? It doesn't really matter. Just start anywhere and get a bit of coverage on and then you can refine it as you go. And like I always say with acrylic, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. You paint over it for five minutes once it's dry. Is that dark, murky water? So that red's really good. I love it because it's just popping through in, in parts rather than having white canvas. So this is really dry brush. There's hardly any water on there, so I can just tone all this down. Okay. really dark in there so so about a month ago we had nearly a metre of rain in three days. Man, this is pouring. It was so heavy, so cool. Nature is pretty full on, there's no doubt about that. So that's where the water's going there. Okay, I'll get a little bit of green up the top. So it's just a bit of nice cadmium or bright, any bright yellow with a bit of that uh, the phthalo blue. All that green up above the rocks there. So it's just all about covering the canvas and we'll bring in all that detail later on. I'll have to stay friends with the cameraman by not painting all over this GoPro too. Okay, so a little bit of structure starting to happen there. So with plain air painting too, the light, it's going to change every five minutes, especially if there's a few clouds floating around, but that doesn't matter. Just run with it. It's dark, murky water. Okay. What have we got happening here now? A bit of yellow and brown. This is burnt sienna. Let's get a bit of fleshy colour into these rocks. A bit of white. It's all a little bit daunting when you start, but you just keep building it up. A bit of paint here, a bit of paint there, and all of a sudden you'll work out where you're going with it and make a decision and just stick with it. Okay.
beautiful day and it's winter. This is Queensland for you. Love it. Okay. So just upstream from the falls on the top side there was a, a big mill, timber mill. They used to drag all the, all the timber out of the forest here. Some amazing timber. So back in the late 1800s there was a lot of timber taken off the mountain. So they actually used this stream to run a, a big uh, wheel to run the mill. That's all long gone now. The Curtis family, I think it was 1800s, 1880 or somewhere around there. Okay. You can see now where that, having all that red under there is handy because it's just a bit of a white canvas. It just gives it a little bit more depth as well. This will be all greens back in there, I guess. So. So a little bit of red with the blue, just for a nice dark, dark colour. Quite a tourist attraction, there's always a heap of people floating in and out. All these walks, all these rainforest walks, it's very popular up here for the tourists. So. Definitely worth coming for a visit. I love Tambourine Mountain. I've been up here for about 20 odd years, a bit over. Never get sick of the place, it's beautiful. So see, I'm just picking out little bits and just slowly, slowly building everything up. Some darkness up there where the foliage is all going to be later. There's a big tree there, but we won't worry about putting that in until later. Otherwise we'll have to paint around it, so we'll stick that in later. There we go. So where some of those ferns and things are hanging off the rock, we'll just put a bit of dark down. So our greens later on, the highlights will jump out from those darker shadows.
So all that water's going to be pouring out of here straight down onto these rocks later. So that's obviously the last thing we'll put in. So we'll get everything underneath it tidied up first. Plenty of mosquitoes down here too. They love it. So as we start building a little bit more structure and working out where we're going, you can start putting all your darks in. So every highlight that we add later is just gonna jump right out. So always give yourself plenty of time because you don't want to rush. It's nice just to sit back and take your time, keep looking at the subject, finding little little bits that jump out that look good. Uh, where are we? Okay. Work a bit of black in that, darken it up a bit more. Yeah, this time of year is just so beautiful here on the mountain. It's plumbing cold. Off you get, mate. Ooh, wasp. <laughs> so cold in the mornings, but the day, days are absolutely stunning. So there we go. There's a little bit of light popping out now, and then a cloud will go over, and it just keeps changing. So you just got to make the best of it. That's all we can do. So getting all these darks in is very important. All the highlights that we pop on after just it'll all pop out nice. So getting there.
funny, you get a few highlights and then it changes with the sun, but we just run with what we got. Pop a little bit of red in there. Rocks are pretty cool to paint. It's just all light and shadow. Highlights and darks. Like I said, with the acrylic, like most, a lot of that's dry already, so it's so good. So as we dance around the painting, you just keep coming back to the dry parts and reworking. Okay. So to paint rainforests, oh man, it's confusing. There's so many greens and so many trees and leaves everywhere. So just get a little bit of confusion in there and just whack some color in and it all starts to take shape. A little bit of red in your green sometimes it always works just for the under undertones Pop a bit of grey into these rocks now. And that nice warm red underneath. You know, just little bits jumping through. It's a good trick before you start a lot of paintings, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you can just undercoat the whole jolly thing, red or blue, pink, purple, whatever you want. It's just nice to have a Nice warm bit of colour popping through.
I always like to exaggerate the colours a little. That way people notice them. So once again, this is dry brush, it's not, not a lot of water in this, so it's just sort of grabbing the, it's got a really good tooth, this canvas, so just grabs it off the brush. It's nice and a rough canvas. Okay, I'll get rid of that. We'll get some more darks build them up again and then come back over with some more lights so there's plenty of bugs here that's always a good thing So it's just the red and blue and a bit of black. So it's just suggestions and impressions of what you see. If you ever try and paint something too exact, you just lose it. I love this just loose color, painterly type of a effect. Okay. The waterfall is going to come over here, so... Now just strengthen, really strengthen all these darks and shadows. Excuse me. All right, so there's a water pool here, so we want to. Darken all that down. We'll get some foliage happening there shortly. Okie dokie. Yeah, 
you can see what I mean when you start, just that first initial sketch. It's really important just to cover that canvas and block everything in, roughly map it out. And it's just a matter of just slowly building. Get rid of a bit, bit of that red now. Nice shadow of my big bald head all over the canvas at the moment. Okay, I'm just going to let this tack off for a sec. It's a little bit thicker here, so I'll give that a minute to dry a bit. And then we'll start putting some nice highlights on. Oh, look at this little fella. Hang about. Come on, mate. Oh, down he goes. Red. Red, yellow, burnt sienna. So just drag a little bit more colour on here. So really light pressure on the brush for this, this bit. Just going to highlight some more of these rocks, get some nice shape happening there. So that water, we're going to put that in last because we'll get all this ready, make it all look pretty. I actually like that little bit of grey too, so keep playing with that a little bit just to get that colour in the rock and next to that red background it almost it's got a bluey tinge to it so a bit more natural colour of the rocks okay Great. All right, clean that up. We'll get a few greens happening. So want all this, where the water's gonna be falling down, I'll make sure that's nice and dry. So we'll have a little play with some green here first for a while. I'm gonna put a little bit more red in there as well. Just get a dirty green color so we can Start picking out some of those ferns. So painting on site, you know, you get a lot of bugs and things and snakes and spiders and all sorts of rubbish. That's all part of it, it's all fun. Okay, so we've got a bit of green back here that'll go behind the waterfall. There So later on when we come back and put the really nice yellowy greens over the top of this darker green, it should pop and look nice. And it's good to stand up and walk back and just have a good look. It's 
a bit hard for me sitting on the log, but um, Okay, lighten that up a little bit now. So that's just a cadmium yellow or a really nice bright yellow. With a bit of blue. Once again, same up here, we'll get some highlights happening up there. So I'm just using the side of the brush, really light pressure. If I push down too hard, it'll be a big, ugly blob, and that's the last thing we want. Okay, so um, a bit of this burnt sienna, a little bit of white with it. Drag a couple of branches through. Okay. Got a really tiny little brush here now. little hints of uh, palm leaves.
Right, we're getting close to whacking a bit of water in here for the waterfall. So. Clean that one up. Um, all right, a little bit of white. So just dragging this really nice light pressure. So this is why we want to make sure all that underpaint's nice and dry. It's pretty dry, so. And the beauty of this too, we can take this home and tidy it up when you get home. If you've got some reference photos, if you need to add anything. Okay. Just put a little tiny bit of blue. Look at that grey. So we don't want too much meat on the brush, not too much paint, just a little bit, just so we can just drag it, drag a few of these lines in. Darker blue there again. So even though that water's not really blue, We've got a bit of reflection from the sky and the greens, from the foliage. So see those rocks underneath just popping through? So that red is such a good good lurk, a good trick because um, it's just jumping out and tying the whole whole piece together so it's really starting to work. 
And I quite often, when I paint, paint plain air like this on, on location, I'll take it home and quite often I'll, I'll go over it with oils and I'll glaze certain parts and strengthen other bits with, with oil paint because it's just extra little beautiful techniques you can do with oils over, over acrylics. Get some great effects. So the whole thing here, we can play with this for hours. I can sit here now and strengthen different things, tone other parts down, play with some more highlights on the rocks, but you know, there's no end to it. You can just play with it for as long as you want, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna drag it on today. For you guys, it's just about experimenting and just be nice and free. And keep practicing. Always practice. And try to tackle subjects you really that are a little bit scary to you sometimes because it gets you out of that safety zone and get all that blue in there. There you go. Bob's your uncle. So this is what I mean, you just come back and just keep keep playing with it and just keep looking at the subject. Stand back, jump up and walk back and have a good look from a distance gives you a different view on what you're doing. So we just keep playing with it. I think I'm going to pull it up there though. I um, hope you learnt something from this. Just get your teeth into it. Enjoy it. Thank you.